welcome to Dan's Model Works and today we're on a field trip to the Canadian Transportation Museum in Heritage Village and it's in Kingsville, Ontario and today we're going to be taking a look at a Dodge CLT 900 I think I got that des designation right at any rate it is a tow truck that was used at I believe both the Windsor Chrysler plant and one of the Detroit Chrysler plants. So let's go take a look at it. So this is a Dodge CNT 900 and as you can tell by the artwork on the door it was used by Chrysler as a wrecker in their Windsor plant and opinions vary as to whether this has been at the museum for two years or four years, but it's been here for, you know, at least two years, and it was driven here under its own power. And it's the version that has the single headlights, and they have another Dodge heavy truck over here that's built as a fire truck and you can see that it has the dual headlights on the fender. And this one sadly does not have a Detroit diesel in it. When we opened the hood a few minutes ago we saw that uh, at least the fuel rack was made by Cummins so my assumption is is that it's a Cummins engine. It doesn't look like a Detroit diesel. But at any rate if you've never seen the way one of these trucks opens up with the hood. We'll open this up because it's pretty cool. I think it's the only truck that actually opened this way. And if we look at the grill, it's not an actual grill. What it is is a series of louvers, much like what are found on Mack trucks. And they should all be connected together, but a couple of them have gone free. But the idea is, is by moving a lever, they can open and close the grill to change how much air is going through the radiator. So we're just going to open this up so you can see just how a Dodge heavy truck opens up. So there's a latch here on the side and you pull out on that and the whole fender swings forward on hinges. And you can see, you can get it, everything on this side of the engine from here, and it says Dodge Diesel on it. If we come around the other side, now this is a waiting restoration. It's got some, some rust issues on it. The staff at the museum say that they have replacement fenders coming. So this moves out of the way like this. And then the hood well made, the spring hinges still work. So this way they can get at all the servicing and everything pretty much just as easy as on a modern truck where the hood flips forward. So now that we don't have a thumb over the lens, we'll try this again. You can see here's a windshield washer reservoir. And if we look in here, there's a the fuel pump says Cummins in it, and if we look, it's definitely not a Detroit diesel, so it's a it's a Cummins. We can see the here's the fan and the fan belt and everything like that. Here is the the steering shaft going down, and it did have power steering. You can see there's a hydraulic ram there, and there's the pitman arm going down. We can see the leaf spring and the shock absorber, and I believe this is an air dryer or an air cleaner for the air brakes. Whereas the one on the other side is the air cleaner for the engine itself, for the air coming in. And as you can see here, it's Dodge diesel. And as I mentioned, it's not a Detroit diesel. We were kind of hoping it was, but it's not. So we'll get this closed up. It looks scary with all of its various panels open. We'll put it back together again. Put it 
back together again. You can see there's the catch. This one definitely needs a little lift. Getting a little saggy in its old age. There we go. Gee, the rest falls off it just like my Dodge Caravan. There we go, all closed up, and you can see the heavy-duty piano hinge on either side of the grill that these hinge on. And there's a couple of fog lights underneath there. So, certainly is a cool old looking truck. So here is the cab. And is there any dates on here as to when this was on the road last? At any rate, we will climb up here and we will see the, the cab. Looks like the headliner has seen better days. As a matter of fact, oh no, I thought the, thought the cab was caving in for a second, but it's not. So we've got a radio there. And of course the gear shift. And it looks like the heater is actually mounted on the back wall of the cab. And here is the, the doghouse covering the back of the engine. has a, not sure if we can see this, it's a Fuller Road Ranger. So basically this is a 10 speed transmission and I don't see a secondary gear shift. Oh no! I think if we look down here that this is probably the control for the for the rear end. This is interesting. This switch if we can see it, it says dry road and slippery road and there's the parking brake and here we've got the instruments and everything is all there nothing is missing but the, this was in service right up until the time they donated it to the museum so Yes, this was still being used at the Chrysler factory in Windsor past the turn of the century. And that looks like it's the lens for the light on the top. Here's a view out the back window. And we'll take a closer look at the back end in a second. Now looking at the windshield here, we can see there's some motor truck permits and there's one for 2000 and there's one for 2001. So we know it was licensed for Detroit as recently as 2001. And there's some stickers on the side window here saying US Customs Service. So it's possible that this truck went back and forth between the Canadian and the American side Just taking a look at the tow truck body, and we were thinking that it was probably a Holmes product, but museum staff said that they were under the impression that this had actually been built by Chrysler at their factory. And something that might back this up is this I-beam right here going up. It has a maker's mark saying it was fabricated by Algoma Canada. So that would be Algoma Steel. 
So it's quite possible that this was built out of structural steel at the Chrysler plant. And you can see the, the winch and there's an airline here as well. And there's that light still has its cap and that one is missing. So that's the one we saw inside the cab. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of rust on this, but I think it probably is, certainly is fixable. Everything seems pretty solid on this. <clears throat> so that's what it looks like from behind. from the other side like I said we couldn't find a builder's plate for the body so it is entirely possible that this was built as a local project at the Chrysler plant now whether it was built on the Canadian side in Windsor or whether it was built in Detroit we don't know they probably saw service on both sides of the Detroit River But these Dodge heavy trucks are pretty rare. Now it has spoked wheels. And of course we've got the fuel tank, the air tanks. And I would say probably about a foot between the back of the cab and the wrecker body. And if we get up close here, you can see who made the winch. Tulsa winch. Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I'm assuming that the chain drive came from some sort of a power takeoff. And there's a couple of manual winches on here as well. Perhaps somebody can enlighten us in the comments as to whether or not they recognize this as being a, a Holmes wrecker or some other company, or if it's something that was home built by Chrysler. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at a Dodge CNT 900 Wrecker. And as I promised in the last video, what will follow will be my weight update.